everyone, I'm Dahlia and welcome back to Training Flower. So today I'm going to teach you how to make a pomegranate fig pistachio pavlova. This pavlova is not only delicious because of all the different things that go into it because you basically have a meringue, whipped cream, and all different fruits and nuts. It's just so good, but it's also gorgeous. It's so pretty because all the different toppings we're going to be putting onto it. So let me take you over everything that you'll need so we can get started. So first off, I've got sugar, egg whites and cream of tartar and these are the things that you'll need to make the meringue based. Then I have here some figs and I've already quartered these. They are just so delicious now. So this is it quartered and I've been eating these non-stop ever since they came into season around two weeks ago. Then I have here some pistachios and they didn't sell shelled pistachios where I live for some reason at Publix so I just had to shell them myself and then chop them up. So you do want to chop those up. Then I have here some pomegranate seeds, vanilla extract, and whipping cream. You can use heavy whipping cream or you can use a non-dairy whipped cream, whatever you like. Just keep in mind if you're using a dairy whipped cream, you're going to want to add a little bit of confectioner sugar to it while you whip it up. So you'll add about four to six tablespoons just to sweeten it. But because I'm going with the non-dairy today, um, which does have a little bit more chemicals and sugar added, um, you don't need to add any sugar to that. So now that we've gone over everything, let's get started. So the first step to making these pavlovas is to make the meringue base. So we've got the sugar, egg whites, and cream of tartar, and I'm just gonna dump all of this into a bowl of an electric mixer fitted with a whisk attachment. So I'm gonna whip this up on medium high speed for about eight to 10 minutes until it's really thick and triples in size and it'll be really sticky like a meringue. Oh, hey guys, so my meringue mixture looks all ready and I'll show you how you can tell when it's ready. So basically, if you lift up the whisk attachment, if it just holds a stiff peak there, it is ready. So it is really stiff and perfect to work with. So now, in order to make our pavlova shape, we need to take an 8 inch pan, just put it down on some parchment paper and trace a circle around it with some pencil. Now remove it and then flip this over. And now you have a perfect circle here so you know exactly where you're going to make the pavlova. So first, I'm going to take some of this meringue mixture and just use it to attach my paper down to the pan. So this is a great trick. You just put it down underneath and attach the parchment paper down. And it's super sticky so it holds it well. Okay guys, so now it's time to shape the pavlova. So we're just going to fill this up in the circle and this is going to be a pretty high um, meringue because it's pavlova. So we're going to keep it within this circle. So now it is time to shape it and make it look nice and pretty. So what you want to do is just spread it out a bit and it really is okay if it goes a little bit farther out from the circle. You just want to have this general shape. So just smooth out the sides. And then you want to make a little dip in the center of the pavlova because we're going to have the cream and the fruit. So just take the rubber spatula and just kind of make a little well. And I'm going to try a design here where you take the spatula and you just make lines going up. And then just smooth, I hope I didn't just get cream in my glasses. <laughs> then just smooth out the center. And if there's any extra cream, just not cream, you know what I mean, meringue, it's like a cream. Actually, you could also make a really similar frosting if you really love the taste of a raw meringue. There's a frosting called the 7-Minute Frosting that basically tastes just like a meringue, but not cooked. So maybe I'll teach that. Anyways, so you just want to spread this out, make it look all nice. Then I'm just going to clean up the sides of this pan a little bit with my finger, or you can use some paper towel, which would be a little bit smarter. So my meringue is all ready to get into the oven. I'm going to place it in a 250 degree oven, and I'll show you what it looks like when it's done. Okay guys, so my meringue base is ready. All I did was bake it at 250 for one hour. Then I shut the oven off and let it sit there for another half hour, took it out, let it cool for an hour, and then I transferred it onto this cake plate. So I've got this here, and now we're going to make the whipped cream. So I've got my whipping cream here, then add in the vanilla extracts, and if you are using dairy whipping cream, make sure you add in some confectioner sugar. So I'm going to whip this on medium high speed until stiff peaks form.
Okay, so my whipped cream looks perfect, and I'll give you a glimpse of what it looks like right here. So you can see it's really stiff, and it looks awesome. So first off, we're going to put all this cream in the center of the pavlova. That's why we made a dip in it earlier. So just scoop that all in. Then you're going to grab some type of offset spatula or knife and smooth it out. And this does not have to look so perfect. I'm making actually lines in my whipped cream just so that it looks a little bit more homemade and rustic kind of. So now that we've got that, we can start topping this off. So I'm not sure exactly how I want to design this, but I'm going to place some stuff down and see how it goes. So first I'm going to start with my figs. So I've had these that are quartered. I think I'm first going to put these all around in circles. Wow, this is coming out gorgeous. Now it's time for the pomegranate seeds and the chopped pistachios. So I'm going to first go in with the pomegranate seeds and just sprinkle them all over. Now it's time for the pistachios. Okay guys, so this is the finished product. I love how it came out. It is full of such bright colors and awesome flavors, and I hope you give it a try. You can find the full recipe on my website. It's rainingflower.com. Give this video a thumbs up if you liked it, and subscribe to my channel for more videos every week, and I'll see you next time. Bye.